Hi folks. So I'm back to the James B. Clo catalog and I'm going to use the cross sections here to help illustrate some differences between siphon jet and blowout and reverse trap and wash down toilets because occasionally I get asked questions about what is a what is a reverse trap toilet so <clears throat> these toilets here are what we would call reverse or no that's wrong we would call these forward trap forward trap toilets or front trap toilets in the catalogs the technical name is wash down in fact You'll see it right there. Or wash down siphon. So these these toilets were simply called wash down siphon toilets. Now I'm actually gonna switch to a 1948 Kohler catalog. And we can see some I think actually all of these styles next to each other. And I'm going to try and zoom in on some of these measurements because it'll help display the difference. So, for example, in the Kohler Trent, you can see, I'm trying to get something to point with. Um, <clears throat> for example, the water area it says is 7. Seven and three quarter by nine and three quarter, I think. The depth of the water seal, that is from the, the lip of the trap here, right there, to the water level, is two and three quarters of it, two and three quarter inches. So, comparatively, that's a very small water area, and it's a pretty shallow water seal. What that means is that if there was any pressure coming up from the sewer, it wouldn't take a lot of pressure um, it would be easier for pressure to bubble through this water which can happen some there are cases where you can get pressure in the sewer or or suction actually if the plumbing isn't working right so back in the day your forward trap toilet or your your trent this would have been considered like the cheapest cheapest toilet you could get. And if you went up a grade, you'd go to something like a Brooklyn's or a standard let's see. The standard Madbrook, Syacto, Elger, Texas. The old, stand, the old standard cadets were considered reverse traps. Kohler Wellworth. So the reverse trap toilet has the trap in the back of the bowl. Which I think, hence the name reverse trap. And the characteristics are similar. It's a two and three quarter seal depth. The passageways on these toilets are also very small. You've got inch and seven eighths. Oh, you can't even see that on the uh, notice on the Trent. It's inch and seven eighths. On uh, on the Brooklyn's, it's still inch and seven eighths. Later versions were two, and believe it or not. Most wash-down toilets have an inch and seven-eighths trapway, even the modernists. Um, that's what the... Because I've seen the catalogs that show the specifications for it. Yet, they they flush real well, but believe it or not, it's only an inch and seven-eighths trap. But anyway... So the water table on the Brooklyn's on a reverse trap is a little bit bigger. It's nine by eleven and a half. So it's a little bit bigger water spot. <clears throat> and also, the wash down and reverse trap toilets 
would flush off of a six gallon tank back in the day. Um, and then a step up from there, oh, not that one, would be something like, a, would be a siphon jet toilet. And this just happens to be a juvenile. So you'll notice that the, the juvenile has a much bigger trapway. It's two and a half inches. That means it'll pass a two and a half inch ball all the way down. It has a three inch deep water seal. And the water table is much bigger. It's ten and a half by thirteen and a half, which is even huge by today's standards. Um, back in the day, most real siphon jet toilets flushed from an eight gallon tank. So they used a lot more water. They had bigger trapways and the water passages themselves were bigger. And so those were the real differences between, I mean, back in the day when toilets were toilets, that was the difference between your siphon jet, your reverse trap, and your washdown toilet. And um, it's not real easy to find anywhere where it actually says what the difference is. I think there were government regulations that kind of set the ground rules as for what kind of toilet, you know, what, constitu what constitutes a siphon jet, what constitutes a reverse trap, and so on. And then you've got a blowout like the Swift, which is similar to the siphon jet in dimensions, actually. Still has a two and a half inch trapway, three inch water seal. 10 and 3 quarter, in this case, 10 and 3 quarter by 13 and a quarter water table area. The only difference is that the trapway is designed not to siphon and it uses water pressure only to evacuate the bowl. And um, yeah, that's how a blowout works. And then if we can find. You can look at the Kingston's, and, okay, so now you're looking at the Stratton, which is a wall-hung blowout, and you can see this, this type of trapway cannot siphon, since you're using water pressure to blow everything out the bowl, you want as few bends in the way. And then we go over to the Kingston, and you see this is a trapway that can siphon because the outlet is just lower than really this point here needs to be lower than that point there and technically the toilet can siphon but you can see the same two and a half inch trapway and yada yada uh, interestingly enough something that I was thinking about recently is that the modern day Stratton and Sifton still have these large, you know, 11 by 15 water table, 11 by 13. It, let's, I'll show you the Sifton. So there's the Sifton. 11 by 13 and a half. So basically, if you find one of these toilets, you look down, you put the seat down, there's basically water everywhere under the toilet seat which was considered a selling point back in the day. I mean, that was kind of a standard for a blowout or a wall hung, or a, not a wall hung, but a siphon jet toilet. But now, except for these, except for the old Kohler blowouts, you can't find a toilet that's like that anymore. So that's kind of cool. It's like uh, some of the last real vintage toilets being made. So anyway, I hope that makes sense and explains what the difference is between a Kohler Brooklands and a Kohler Downing and so on. Um, I'll see you guys later. Bye.